All right, good evening, everyone. Uh, it is 7 o'clock, and at this time I'll call the Hamilton Select Board meeting to order for December 19th, 2022. Uh, and we'll start with our Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Thank you, everyone. Uh, we have a few announcements and board openings. Uh, Historic District Commission has two openings, one for a board of realtor and one for an at-large member. Uh, Conservation Commission has two openings. Hamilton Housing Authority has one opening. Human Rights Commission has one opening for the Housing Authority. Uh, Hamilton Environmental Impact Committee has two openings. Hamilton Council on Aging has two associate member openings, as well as the Finance and Advisory Committee has two associate member openings. Uh, and at this time we have uh, public comment for three minutes on topics not already on our agenda tonight. So if you are on Zoom and wish to speak, raise your hand. If you're here, come up to the podium, state your name. Otherwise, we will proceed. So we have select board members and town manager reports now. Uh, any report from you, Bill, tonight? Nothing to add tonight, no. All right, Caroline, anything from you? Nothing to report, thank you, though. Jamie? No. Um, <clears throat> not much to report from me. Uh, we have coming up, just to put a bug in your ear, I got a letter from the Historic District Commission. Um, they are looking to expand their jurisdiction within the Historic District. Uh, to it sounds like kind of everything on your property for the most part. Um, so we'll be looking at that letter and discussing it in an upcoming meeting. Also, um, this last weekend here, uh, the police uh, department had this annual Stuff a Cruiser, which I think was pretty successful this year, and it's always a good cause. Uh, gives to the Shriners Hospital to give kids toys after surgeries, which is a great cause. Uh, and uh, the rec department is also in the midst of discussing uh, the athletic field improvement project. Uh, we have someone here tonight just going to talk to us a bit about it uh, and talk about some financing, but we'll get to that later on. Uh, anything from your time and report, Joe? I will give you one highlight. The cell tower is working. <laughs> it's on. Cell tower is on. We were notified last Friday that it was actually turned on a couple <coughs> days prior. They came and did what they had to do, didn't even tell us they were here. Four, four bars. But we had an idea that it might be working because several of our uh, DPW workers said, I got full bars and I've never had full bars. So we had an idea that it might be working, but we confirmed it on Friday. And so that's the first step. Um, now, now we turn our attention to a second location and try to uh, continue to improve. So. All right. Thank you. Thought people would want to know about that. <laughs> yep. Uh, and up next, we have a town clerk report for our 2023 uh, elections update with our town clerk, Corinne Kale. Welcome, Corinne. Hi, thanks everyone. Good to be here. Um, just on a side note, if I may first, if folks didn't get an opportunity to drop things off at the Stuff a Cruiser, we do have a box for Toys for Tots, um, the Marine Corps Toys for Tots program here in the lobby, or uh, the front uh, hallway of Town Hall. So if folks uh, want to uh, contribute there, that'd be great too. So yeah, I'm here to talk about the 2023 election. Seems like it's far off, but it's really not. The election is Thursday, April 6th which is the Thursday after our April 1st town meeting. Um, so I want to let you know the dates and deadlines and the positions that are up for re-election this year. So I'll start with the positions. The select board, there is one position available, the position currently held by Jamie Knutson. Town clerk, position held by me, is already up for re-election. Town moderator, the one-year appointment is up. Board of Assessors has one um, position, Joe Shackman's position. Planning Board, uh, three-year term, has two positions, um, Marnie Crouch and Richard Boroff. Hamilton Wenham Library Trustee, three-year, one position, Mary Jane M.J. Brown from here in Hamilton. And the Regional School Committee does have two positions available, Dana, Alara, and Anna Sizek. And I will be posting things. I'm going to create a 2023 local election tab on my um, web page, the town hall and town clerk web page. So you'll be able to access all of that. And um, 
Um, so, um, one the nomination papers will be available Tuesday, January 10th. They're due back February 16th. So, obviously, key days. Uh, one slight change to nomination papers, and maybe this is a little quiz. How many, how many signatures were required on the nomination papers? Seventy-five, right? <laughs> no, no, forty. 40. Right. It's I always been forty, and um, you have to adjust it after a state election. It's one percent of the total number of votes for governor, not including the blanks. So we're down to thirty-seven signatures. <laughs> so a little less work. So if that encourages anybody to consider running, it makes it a slight bit. <laughs> Save the time with those three less. Yes. Signatures. Yeah. Three, yeah, it takes a little less time. Um, so that's different. And then the other thing that will be different this year is, um, as a reminder to everyone, with the Votes Act, vote by mail is mandatory for local elections unless we decided to opt out. But um, um, I don't have any reason to want to opt out from that. I think our community really likes vote by mail. We had over 40% of those who just voted in the state election vote by mail. And then... Um, uh, in-person early voting is not mandatory unless a community wants to opt in. Um, I did meet with my board of registrars last Friday because the recommendation would come from them, not even from me. Um, and we looked at the data. We had, we had less than 10% of our voters vote in person, and it really does appear to be duplicative. Even across the state, I think the number was 7%, because if people want to vote other than Election Day, it seems to be that vote by mail really is the way to go. Um, some communities, though, are going to reverse it. They're not going to do vote by mail, and they're going to do in person only. So it really depends. But so as we, as of today, we'll absolutely have vote by mail, but we'll not be recommending through the Board of Registrars in person early voting. Um, absentee voting still does exist. It's been around forever. Did not go away. So if folks are going to be out of town, they can still vote absentee. And in fact, absentee voting is available up until noon the day before the election. So I don't think we're um, uh, minimizing opportunities for people to vote in the local election. So I think that's the main dates, deadlines. As I said, I will be posting everything on the website. I will be notifying each of the incumbents of the dates and their um, obligations in regards to next steps and deadlines. Um, so that's kind of the next thing on my plate. And then we'll see some of you hopefully on January 10th or 11th for nomination papers. Any questions? Pretty clear? Terrific. Thank you so much. Thank you, Corinne. Thank you. It's particularly hot tonight. It's like there's like a lot of there's little, there's little feedback. Picking yeah. up <coughs> very close. I, we tried to correct it, but then we wound up turning off this, the Zoom, so we got it turned back on. But Bill's here. And like Bill's here. Figure it out. That's uh, okay. Um, Speed is not here yet. So, so why don't want to do the Comcast one first then? Yeah, I mean, it, if the board's okay, we'll take things a little bit out of order since we don't have our national grid rep with us. We'll move on to the Comcast. Everyone's okay with that? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> All right. So we have a public hearing for Comcast up next, which is initial uh, ascertainment discussion and determination of needs for cable license renewal. Uh, attorney Bill August is our attorney working with us. Not here either, so. Um, <laughs> but but we do have the Comcast folks here, yeah. and you have a statement from Bill. So. Yeah, so I'm going to read a statement here. Um, good evening. Welcome to the Town of Hamilton's initial public hearing on Comcast cable license renewal. I'm Sean Farrell, chairman of the select board, which is the cable license franchising authority under Massachusetts law. Uh, by way of background for the public, Comcast's Hamilton Cable License does not expire until March 1st, 2025. However, the Federal Cable Act requires a holding of a public proceeding to ascertain the cable-related needs of the community and town during the third year prior to license expiration. Uh, the hearing is to provide opportunity for public comment on town needs, Comcast performance, and possible renewal license, and a possible renewal license. Uh, tonight's hearing is uh, merely the opening of the process to allow public comment and this initial hearing will be followed by additional future opportunities for public comment as we get closer to Comcast March 1st 2025 license expiration date. Uh, notice of this hearing was in the local newspapers two successive weeks. Copies of the legal advertisements are here entered into the record as ascertainment hearing exhibits one and two. Um, public comments as well as questions to Comcast if any should be directed through 
myself, and I will rule whether they are in order. Uh, please keep your comments no longer than four minutes. Uh, if there are any persons present who would like to comment on the Hamilton Comcast renewal needs at this time, uh, and if so, please come to the podium and identify yourself, and let's proceed. Thank you. And just like to say, initially, <clears throat> with these hearings, we really appreciate uh, Comcast's um, participation and funding of our HWCAM and all the programming it provides for our local government, schools, sports, um, Council on Aging, et cetera. Bill, do you want to say anything? Uh, <clears throat> I hear an echo here. It's a little weird, but yeah, I don't know if that uh, speaker's on. Okay, so I'm Bill Melville. I'm the executive director of HWCAM, and I uh, just want to thank the select board for their support and also Comcast for their support. Um, since since the pandemic about two years ago, it's really come to my uh, it's come it's come to my opinion that public access is really really important. And if you looked at the amount of people that reached out to HWCAM before the pandemic, and then after the pandemic, uh, a lot of people really rely on us. And part of that is because uh, of the remote participation and. Um, I think that people aren't going to, you know, we don't have newspapers online anymore, right? We don't, we don't have the patch here anymore. We don't have the Chronicle anymore. So a lot of people look for HWCAM as a resource to what's going on. So like you said, we do um, select board meetings, planning board meetings, um, FinCOMs, community concerts, so this week, even though it's a short week, we have four events happening. So tonight, two tomorrow night, and two Wednesday. The five events, actually. So I think it's really important that we get the support from Comcast because it's, it's needed. The, the technology landscape is changing, and to keep up with, <coughs> with it, we need, we need support for that. All right, thank you, sir. Bill and we have uh, Bill August, our attorney, is helping us with this renewal process. Uh, Bill, do you want to say anything? Uh, just the uh, commenting that this is intended under the Federal Cable Act to be a, a very um, public and transparent process that um, under the Cable Act should can 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 and, and does continue even after tonight's preliminary uh hearing to ascertain needs so that just for the benefit of the public that even after the closing of this hearing the record for ascertaining needs uh continues to be open until further notice so that there is this is just the beginning of uh, doing our homework as a town, as a community, and working in partnership with Comcast to identify needs to have a good renewal. So the, the record's open. Uh, folks should be feel welcome to provide additional comments. And just to echo what Bill Melville said, having been involved in this very interesting legislative framework, it's one of the only legislative frameworks where like major, major, like Fortune 500 companies meet with their community of service, uh, you know, every 10 years or so many years to, to figure to figure out these needs. But with the pandemic, it, it really did shine a light. I, I, I can tell you, I've been to many, I go, I go to like about a renewal hearing a month and so many towns said, it, it, you know the the network TV didn't have any like town specific program on the uh, COVID nineteen public health measures, so the local channels really became a uh, a somewhat unique source. So that, I find that to be a very interesting observation by Bill, because and I've heard it elsewhere, uh, and I think it's important. Um, I just note also, I see. Um, Comcast's representative is in attendance and is on the screen, so I would just recognize 
Kerry and tonight's not a negotiation in any way so no worries Kerry. but if you want to just um, you know introduce yourself to the town and uh, I, I would ask the chair to uh, allow that yeah, thanks Bill uh, Kerry uh, is it Miss Morris if I can read from that far away to the screen hmm. we can't hear her we can't hear you Kerry maybe you take she's having audio issues I think yeah, from she's the chat. Audio issues. see if she can get off mute no. Can you unmute she's, she's still muted. I can't. It just, for some reason, she's only telling me to ask her to unmute. Right. Carrie, you have to press that mute microphone. Can you hear me now? Yes. 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 Okay. Uh, thank you so much for having me. It's really great to um, put names to faces. Uh, so just wanted to uh, come on here tonight and, uh, you know, I'm the government affairs liaison for Comcast, so if any issues um, arise or if you have any questions please come to me um, I'm happy to, to help and happy to be here tonight if anyone has questions for me and it's nice to meet you Bill <laughs> um, Bill and Bill I guess if you can we've obviously opened the kind of public hearing and input session tonight and if anybody here or on zoom wants to give any input please do but Mr. August, maybe if you could tell a little bit about next steps in the process for, for folks listening in the board. You're on mute, Bill. You're on mute, Bill. <laughs> Based on the um, identifying of the local needs, uh, which is phase one, uh, we will go into phase two, which is really where the rubber meets the road and uh, pull together a draft renewal license um, and then with the approval of the town um, and of Bill Melville who's who really will give us a reality check on some of the uh, technicalities of the license like the local uh, architecture connecting the studio to different locations um we'll circulate that document to uh comcast and under the cable act it specifically provides two procedures one circulated to comcast as part of a public process and have informal renewal negotiations and try to come to agreement through um, some negotiation sessions. The Cable Act also provides for a formal process where, based on the ascertainment, we first issue an RFP to Comcast as the incumbent and have them respond to the RFP nice. before doing a um, informal negotiation based on a license. Like 19 out of 20 towns go with the informal it cuts to the chase and it's right. cheaper and more cost effective for the town to just circulate the draft license rather than this two-step do an rfp see the formal response to the rfp and then first do a draft license so it's conceptually a very simple phase one identify needs and the primary areas of identifying needs are the operating uh, budget of Hamilton Wenham Cam, with us looking at the Hamilton needs. And we note that this studio is on double duty. So right off the bat, you know, they're they're serving, they're doing municipal meetings and whatnot for two towns. So. Comcast really is getting a lot of value for this, and that should be a factor in favor of me, you know, robust support for the nonprofit access corporation. In addition to the operating budget needs, we look at the capital needs, um, and those are usually two separate sections of the license, one on the annual support, which is at a very good level now, so we just want to continue it at the level permitted under the Cable Act at the ma maximum level. And then the capital needs tend to vary the most from community to community. Um, and uh, Bill 
Melville and his team working with Joe as uh, manager and the town in prior renewals generated, you know, very detailed itemized equipment budgets. Mm -hmm. uh, to, so we would have a very credible uh, empirical cost justification for the uh, uh, financial negotiations. Now there are a couple of new things in the negotiations like high definition peg um, that's new for Comcast as of 2018. So we're trying to update things and make sure we can get one of the three peg access channels to be high definition peg access. There are some other new technologies. Now streaming is so good to go from remote video originations. We used to have to need a hard wire to go from, let's say a school back to the studio hub site. So, you know, we have to, uh, look at the license in terms of that local architecture, see if we want to get capital funding for any kind of streaming connections to replace what in some towns are old uh, institutional network connections. So we're going to update the license in terms of the, the funding and the, um, uh, you know, the local uh, technology. There are some other le new le legal wrinkles, in, you know, in terms of what uh, Comcast can charge against the uh, annual 5% payments under a new FCC rule. So we have to uh, wrangle with uh, Comcast a little bit on that. But basically phase one is just kind of the paving the way, the ascertainment to the, you know, the real deal coming up with a license that will give the town some security and longevity of the Comcast commitments. Perfect, thanks Bill. Bill Melville, I have a question for you. Yes. <clears throat> Bill August was just talking about we share HW Cam with Wenham. Is it, Wenham's license on the same renewal schedule, so we're renewing yes, both yes. at the same time? Yep. That's what I thought. And just to add, we also uh, support the schools, too, so it's three entities. And so you'll do kind of what we've done previously in the past. You'll kind of give us a list of what we currently kind of offer plus what we're kind of looking to add to the programming or coverage that we have equipment wise and et cetera. Yeah, because there's an end of life to the equipment. Um, I know we just did this rack system four or five years ago, I think. Probably. And then we did, right when the pandemic hit, we did the streaming part of it. Mm -hmm. But the playback, which is the hub that's on Railroad Ave, that, that those computers are pretty old. And do we have any HD right now? We don't, do No, we? no. And that's what we're hoping to get. That'd be great because, you know, I'm streaming this uh, in HD back to the studio and I have to downgrade it to send right. it out to Comcast, which is... Right. It doesn't yeah. make quite sense. It doesn't make quite sense, yeah. Any questions from the board for Bill Melville, Bill August, or our no, Comcast we representative? This. We went through this. Uh, this before. We've been through it a few <laughs> times before. And I think it's pretty so, uh, straightforward. Pretty straightforward. Any questions from you folks? All right. Thank you, Mr. August. Uh, yeah, I would just like to add a thank you because I did a renewal a few years ago on the Verizon with uh, with Joe and uh, and Bill Melville, and uh, I kind of work hard on them and disappear. But I just really want to thank everyone who was involved because they were there at every turn to you know provide me information and be helpful. So you have a good team there. Thank you. Thank you, Bill, and thank you, Mr. Yes. Morris, for joining us. Nice to meet you. Okay. Good night, folks. All right. Good night. Thanks, Bill. Still must be here. If you can take into a public hearing without national grid, I don't know how controversial it is. It's up to you. Yeah, I don't know if they're, if I mean we can. If we have questions, we can table them. I guess or we table it. <clears throat> All right. Up next, we have a public hearing for national grid uh, pole placement at Porter Lane and Asbury Street. And the plan is number three zero six two one four six six discussion and vote and this is in your packets there's a little map and the notice about the hearing and if I looked at it correctly it's just a support yeah it's a uh, cross arm push brace, brace pull. push brace push so brace so it's not a relocation it's just a stabilizing basically right. I believe there's a, a, a good amount of pressure on the on the uh, pole because of the it's at a curve. The corner it's at, at a curve, so the tension from the wires coming from either side pulls it, so they want to support that with a brace. Any questions on that? No. 
So is anybody here? Nobody is here from any of Butters and um, our National Grid rep, and I'm gonna forget her name, and I've said it a thousand times. Sabita. Sabita is not here as well. Typically, we kind of grill Sabita. No, double, we double got, poles. We have, we have everything else. He's got to, we got a bargain. <laughs> I don't think we do at the moment. I think we're, I asked Joe last week or something how we were doing on double poles, and he hasn't got back to me. But I think we're in pretty good shape for him. Shape. Some of the hold up for double poles are some of our fire signaling stuff on them on some of them. So I think we've taken care of all that. I think they've done a pretty good job of I was trying to, getting rid of most of them. I was trying to figure out if this was the side of the street without the sidewalk or with the sidewalk. I can't really tell from the sketch. It's, I'm get, you know, knowing where, how. It looks like it goes over this. I was trying to figure out if it goes over the sidewalk, <coughs> how does that work? But I'm assuming they have a detail for that, but. You put it in the Google map, GIS I did, but something. it's like, I can't. Come up really. I'm assuming it's the side with the sidewalk, but I can't really. I think it's on the edge of the sidewalk. Yeah, so that was my only question was how did they deal with the sidewalk? Yeah, how does it, does it obstruct anything? Well, we could we could postpone a vote until Sabina shows up tonight or next meeting if we want to. It's not like sometimes we have a kind of a crunch on these because it's like a homeowner wanting to get a hookup on a new house or something right, like this that. Is not we that, don't want to yeah. hold up the project, but this is existing conditions and it's just improving the existing conditions. It's not a move, a move or a remove or add or anything. What do we think? Do you have questions, Bill, that you want no, to? No, I, I'm, I'm, I was just more curious about. <clears throat> All right, if nobody has any hesitations, I'll take a motion to approve it. I move that we approve the pole placement at Porter Lane and Asbury Street. Reference plan 30621466. All right, a second by anybody? Second. Second by Jamie. Any further discussion? Okay, hearing none. All those in favor say aye. 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 The ayes have it. It's unanimous. <clears throat> Thank you. All right. Uh, next, we have request by the Hamilton Wenham Athletic Field Improvement Committee for 2023 annual town meeting action. We have discussion. So Come on up, fellas. Jay, you're going to speak tonight, only if needed. You're just going to observe. He, All right. He, he nominated me. <laughs> Lucky you. He's just I know. Muscle. Uh, my name is Peter Gordeau, 416 Bridge Street, and I'm here this <clears throat> evening on behalf of the Hamilton Wenham Athletic Facility Improvement Committee, and uh, as well as the, informally the school district. Um, as you may, well, as just a little bit of background, I think you are all aware that there's been a move afoot for better than a decade to try and bring um, some improved facilities to the high school and middle school athletic complex. Um, that effort <clears throat> over the last couple of years really has um, gained some critical mass and momentum. We have, a, we have a school committee that's very supportive. We have an administration that's very supportive. And we seem to have uh, a lot of towns people who are very excited about trying to address a real need at the at the uh, at the school complex. We're one of very few schools in the Cape Ann League that uh, has no turf and no lights on any of our athletic facilities. We're also one of the few schools that doesn't have uh, tennis at the complex. And one of the goals of this, uh, one of the goals of has always been to try and bring students back to campus. Currently, we've got students going to the library uh, to practice. We've got students going to Patton Park, previously uh, Pingree Park for tennis practice. So a lot of kids leaving campus every day, jumping in a friend's car, driving to a driving to an off-site location, which, you know, for obvious reasons, isn't ideal. Um, and the condition of our facilities is also, at this point, somewhere between inadequate and occasionally dangerous. We lose. Uh, we lose games to unplayable fields. We uh, aren't able to host. Uh, we're, we're not able to host state tournament games when we have a home opportunity. We end up at Gordon over at St. John's Prep uh, because our our facilities, the, simply the dimensions of our facilities, um, don't meet state requirements. So that's just all by way of background. Um, but the real reason we're here tonight is that the as, again, as you're probably aware. Uh, the superintendent in, currently intends to bring this project to the Springtown meeting. Um, 
and you know seeking funding and one of the pieces of funding will be there are three there are several pieces of funding one will be uh, you know the taxpayers and a debt exclusion uh, another will be private fundraising and <coughs> things like um, we hope um, CPC grants and another piece is the so-called patent fund and back in 2015 uh, you may recall that the town meeting voted to set aside uh, half a million dollars of proceeds from the sale of the patent property uh, what became patent ridge for future athletic improvement facilities with an idea that it would be put towards the turf project and i think we are finally at that point where uh, we may be in a position to use this money and it's going to take a town meeting action to uh, release it and it's also going to take some coordination with uh, with the town of Wenham because as I recall and I can read it to you the the uh, the, the the motion um, required that Wenham uh, provide their matching fair share so you know using using the typical formula I don't know whether these are exact numbers but if if we're going to if Hamilton is going to contribute half a million dollars we'd be looking for where you we the community would be looking for Wenham to contribute <coughs> their third or two hundred and fifty thousand dollars and so we need to try and start those wheels in motion to uh, to see if the town would release that money you know subject to a number of other things uh, primarily this project being approved overall uh, by the by the voters at town meeting and again at the polls so I'm sure I'm leaving lots of things out but I'm happy to answer questions or um, and I guess you know, I'm really seeking your input as to how we how we move this forward so to, to Peter's point there's a lot of moving parts here um, we had a chairs kind of meeting with the school department and the Wenham select board and FinCom <coughs> representatives of a week ago now maybe uh, just under a week ago was last Tuesday or Wednesday uh, and we discussed this a little bit um, our CPC and we have our chair here tonight Jay Butler he can correct me if I miss anything but our CPC so far has been willing to have the conversation about money and, and donating to the or at least bringing it to the town meeting and, and having a grant for the uh, field improvement um, from what I've heard and seen I guess the Wenham CPC is the opposite at the moment we hope <coughs> to change their perspective we they had a um, they had their annual hey town what's what should we be focused on meeting about a month ago and uh, one of our members made a presentation and we hope that they have an open mind because I think if they're you know representing their constituents they're gonna find that there's a lot of support amongst their constituents for this project right and I guess I would implore your group since you have a, a substantial energized group to really gather that support and start flooding the select board there and CPC with emails in support of the project because I think unless they get that they've dug in their heels in the past on different things and this may be one of those items um, and I think with our CPC we have to <laughs> I guess there's two levels if our CPC gives then we're will it, we would want to match one CPC with their ratio of the contribution I think the same with the stabilization fund release it's the same kind of thing so there's a lot of different factors that have to all align to have all of this happen I'd, I'd like to say it would be smooth sailing but you never know with with multiple parties involved and one of the things that I've been hoping is that Wenham's match of the patent that they wouldn't use their CPC to match the patent fund because right. if we did that we would presumably be leaving a lot of money on the table right and that's that's my kind of worst case scenario thoughts on that that and the and John McGrath is online he can also chime in too because he was at the same meeting I was at when their select board and FinCom were talking and I had brought this up about that the money would have to be kind of general fund free cash something like that from Wenham or raise an appropriate we didn't get much um, warm and fuzzy feeling that they were going to do that um, so <laughs> you know it's going to take a lot of support from the Wenham side I think to move their administration to move in that direction 
who is the who is the right body to be working with Wenham, you know, on this match? Is it, you know, I, I've always assumed that it would be best from select board to select board, but we have not been successful. In that. <laughs> I was just gonna say, we uh, let's, we've, just, let's just talk about let's talk about us for a second. Though. Let's talk so, about us for a second. So. I think that you know we can talk about it, do a straw, but I think you're going to find the supporters here to to do what we need to do to fund the field. So, in what it's all or nothing from us, is that how it works? It's written that way. It's all either we we give only if a wedding matches. The the, the, uh, the, the way the stabilization for the field turf field okay. stabilization fund was adopted by a town meeting okay. with a requirement that Pam, that one provide its pro, uh, whatever the apportionment the apportioned match that would be right. required. And <coughs> the CPC has generally in the past on the joint thing, programs right. done the same thing. Right, and so if we say, if Wenham says, we're gonna only give 50K uh, free cash. And we can only give 100. And we can only match the 100, 100 or whatever yeah. the ratio is. Right. And then we have that other 400K in that stabilization fund that it it's gonna take a two thirds vote to move it out of that for whatever purpose it is, be it I mean, right now, I think that the when we set it up in 2015, it was thought that it would be for an athletic field improvement with an AstroTurf field. Mm -hmm. But we left it a little bit open so it could be field improvements in general. Could be a, right. you know, Donovan Fields water stuff or um, whatever else. But the, the main thought was that it would be used for this project. So it kind of all depends on Wenham, and it's tough to determine because Wenham meets after us on the same day typically so it, there is a there is another scenario that we've discussed that I don't know whether I should get down this rabbit hole now but if Wenham if Wenham was not willing to match its fair share with free cash and we and therefore we were only left with what the two CPCs might do I wonder whether you you split the balance of the project each town takes its each town takes its proportionate share that it's now financing, and Hamilton takes its half million dollars and immediately, you know, either never borrows or pays down its share of the debt. So it got 100% of the benefit of that. Um, and therefore, to me, that would perhaps negate Wenham's obligation to match because <coughs> Hamilton would have gotten 100% of the benefit. The challenge I see with that is that likely the way this is from our discussion at the five chairs meeting last week, the way this is likely to be funded is through a debt exclusion that the schools would seek, and right. the schools would take the debt and then assess us our share, our our, our requisite shares through the assessment. Right. So we wouldn't be paying directly against the the uh, the uh, the debt because why we wouldn't right. be taking our, our, our names. Why couldn't your share be immediately, you know, no, your share could be a half million dollars smaller than it would be, you know, according to the exact apportionment? We, we can investigate that with Vinny and, and Eric Tracy, um, see if, if, if that's a, a possible option. Right. But you'd still need the, you'd still need a two-thirds vote of the majority of right. the town right. meeting to approve that funding uh, approach. Yeah. Which yeah, this is, uh, this is John McGrath, if I could make a couple of comments. Sure. Um, <clears throat> I think it's pretty clear this is a school project and Eric is sort of leading the charge. Um, and what we agreed last week was that the school needs to, that the school and the two towns need to come together and communicate um, what's coming. And what's coming is um, a fields project which, for which there's a lot of support in both towns, I believe, and in the school uh, committee, and a new school project. And what we agreed that made sense is to ramp up the communication to the towns as to what's happening. So for example, one of the questions we asked was, you know, on the fields project, hey, what's the current budget? Um, is it the same, 13 million, has it changed? what's the status of the fundraising. Um, but I think bottom line, it's a school project. And I think what we need to do is energize the three entities around what's coming with the schools, with the fields project being a big part of it. Um, and I do believe we talked about some of these warrant articles that'll, that, that'll probably emerge next April 
and they would be sort of contingent on the two towns getting together and you know advancing support for these projects so in all due respect i think coming in and asking the select board to kind of take this and kind of you know manage the communications i think that's probably not the best formula i think the best formula is to connect with eric stand up communication approach to both towns get all the financials updated and generate community support around everything that's coming down the pike that that's sort of my take um as we sort of came out of the five chairs meeting last week i, I do agree there's a lot of support to get this done um but i also asked eric well what if you only got you know uh a third of your total budget you know what are your priorities for the fields you know i said common practice would be you know prioritize of the 13 million dollars you know what's what's the most important piece and just to say it's all or nothing that doesn't really resonate with me i think we other taxpayers hey here's our plan here's how we want to do the project uh and and build community support through a really effective communication approach so that, that's sort of you know that was sort of the takeaway that i got uh and i think uh we need to rally around this to try to make it happen. So th th those are some of my thoughts. Thanks, John. Yeah, when will when will the budget sort of financial structure be public? How much? I don't think it's. I I don't think we've. I, I think it's been public for a long time in terms of you know the general the general approach. Um, we had been talking about. Uh, probably a 13 million dollar project that um, did not include any sort of amenities building bathrooms or uh, a concession stand or anything like that and at a recent meeting of the facilities group the the group felt strongly that if we're going to do this we ought to you know try and do it the right way which is to include that bathroom facility so we don't have we presently don't have the engineer's budget or the engineer's estimate for uh, what we're adding, but I would suggest that we've probably taken it from a $13 million project to a $15 million project. And the we've always talked about sort of a one-third, two-thirds relationship between uh, a debt exclusion and fundraising. And the fundraising, you know, the way we're accounting for fundraising is what's in that is private fundraising, uh, whatever we generate from the patent fund, whatever we generate from the two CPCs, and whatever we generate from um, any other state grants that we're able to obtain. So that's, you know, if it's a $15 million project, we're talking about, you know, five and 10 type of thing. So, so in October, um, I have laid out some financial projections for cost using uh, 12890000 with four and a half million dollars worth of private funding i mean i have these numbers burned in my brain here now i'm hearing it's 15 million and what's the fundraising commitment a third of that so not four and a half but we've, less we've all no we've always taken the we've we've taken the approach that we um, take on a third of the of the need so it's a 15 million dollar project we're Signing up to raise five between private fundraising, um, CPCs, and the patent fund. Okay. Well, so just from a financial standpoint, in the space of two months, the number has gone from twelve eight ninety to fifteen, and the fundraising sounds a little less certain than it did two months ago. So anyway, I'm just I'm just trying to give you some financial financial gut check here in terms of, you know, the budget's now up two million and the fundraising sounds a little less certain so part of the part of the conversation really needs to be what's the budget what's the fundraising and what what do the towns need to project and get get that really solid and then let's get in front of the the taxpayers after the first of the year with an information session hey here's what we're trying to do and, and start to build that community support it may already be there, but I just think we need to solidify the numbers and say, here's what we're trying to do. Peter, for that, that, to John, that would be my recommendation. To John's point about fundraising, what have you raised so far? 
we haven't we haven't obtained any substantial fund you know fundraising at this point we with have you the, taken any pledges or anything nope, like that no nope. we've been the there is a there's an active fundraising group but until very recently the scope of the project wasn't fully fleshed out so I think it's been very it, it's been we've not really been in a position to uh, pursue formal uh, fundraising to this point so it's this is this is an issue um, and I for, say that makes me a little nervous yeah. to John's point there we've only got a handful of months before this goes to a town meeting vote and you're pledging X number of fundraising and if you don't get it that st stunts the project or st stops it depending on you know we're not going to raise it and appropriate the difference so. I agree I agree 100% and this is this is this is a sort of an internal struggle that we're trying to figure out because it's you know we're trying to we're trying to deal with town meeting schedules um, and you know the, a project that's been fluid until very recently and um, you know trying to Right, and because it, if, it, so if it passes and, and, and meeting, it's yeah, sh shovel right, in the ground so as soon as possible. And we just see like a you know, calendar, right? Like a, like we do a budget calendar, right? And what certain milestones would be good if you guys had a calendar when you would hit certain things. But the one thing I didn't hear you mention, you mentioned the patent and the, and the fundraising CBC. We didn't mention the school. Is this, the school has, what we voted on in the last time meeting was the school was going to create an internal fund. They're going to do 1.7. Is that so? so we're going to gonna pull that out of E and D and put it in their stabilization fund. Right. We're gonna yeah, that's that's already been budgeted. Point seven. That would, in, in my way of thinking, that would offset. That would that would reduce the that would reduce the school's share, the debt exclusion. Okay. Not oh. the fundraising. Okay. All right. That's good. All right. In, in Peter, so if, if, if I remember the last time um, you folks came to the select board meeting, the uh, sort of the status was about the same, only we were hoping that we would get the stabilization vote done and then that was then going to be a trigger to draw in some of the committed fundraising money and that sounds like although that vote happened it didn't then cause people to ante up on the fundraising side so anyway uh, the community supports there i just think the the logistics and the you know the firmness of the project is kind of going sideways a little and we need to firm it up and kind of make it happen so that would be what i hope we can get done here before we get I mean, we're going to be drafting up uh, articles with eric for the town meeting and the fincom is going to be drafting up their commentary i don't know third week of january so we need to kind of get our act together and try to get this thing uh tuned up so we can get in front of the voters and then hold an information session before the town meetings so that we just owe a nice clean clear story to the taxpayers i think the votes will be there from the school population or the school uh supporters to get this done we just need to clean up the message a bit i think but the articles uh, are uh, those are my thoughts we're, we want to release the cpc funds and we want to vote for the debt exclusion. Those are the two things that will be on. And the stabilization. Three things. And stabilization. Three things. So there's going to be three articles. I think we all know that even if the FinCom says they hate it, it'll still pass. The, I think what oh, I'm trying to figure out absolutely. is. Absolutely. There's three things. And I think, John, what you're asking is, what are the amounts, right? Yeah. We just, we just need the amounts. So there's going to be three articles. We need to know the amounts for those three articles. But other than that, there's no, I mean, we're certainly not kicking this to a special town meeting in the fall, and we're definitely not kicking it out a full it's, 12 but months. But Wenham is the big driver. Right. Yeah, yeah we, we need to get Wenham lined up. match on the yeah. CPC no, fund. everything. <clears throat> on everything. Yes. Yeah. And we're saying we would not put the articles on the warrant if we didn't have a pre-indicator from no, Wenham. No, Wenham did put it I on think, the warrant. didn't have it on the warrant. Right. If Wenham just refused outright to put on the warrant, then we, we would be, we, our hand would be forced. We wouldn't put on, yeah. I mean, we could put on the warrant, but no, no one would probably approve it and if it did I don't I just well, what do we mean out. no one would approve it certainly Hamilton residents would come out and approve it and then they would make when have a special town meeting in the fall and make them feel terrible well I just think like <laughs> this is politics not not process true but I think too will I mean t I would assume we will write our Warren articles contingent on Wenham's approval right right yeah. on whatever we can, we, that we ratio can definitely is write the, we can definitely write the articles <clears> that you know, we, not we to exceed this, we X. We this subject to approvals of such and such and such and such by with some sort of sunset clause. And and and, and 
then it's whatever the in their court and then three so the, year, the next step for these guys is we need clear language for the three articles with the yeah. amounts with contingency on Wenham. right and Correct. i would say all these articles in as much as i'm enjoying the involvement of the group with peter and jay etc those articles are going to come from eric tracy from eric right. yeah right okay. yeah yeah, there'll, there'll be five school warrant articles. First one's the budget. Yep. Second, the second one's the fields. The third one is the school stabilization right. item, you know. Um, and then the fourth one will be the Hamilton Stabilization Fund, the patent, right. the patent fund. And then the last one will be the CPC. So there are five school warrant articles. Two of them have the fields project stuff buried in them so anyway it, corinne if i can just ask a question of peter real quick peter when you were talking about the kind of the private fundraising side were you including cpc and town money in that I mean, yeah the, the that's private in your fund, total number the, right so private fund to private fundraising the patent fund cpc would be numbers that would amounts that would count towards the third of private of, of fundraising okay. all right that's just how we've always done the math internally. Okay. I'm sure it's on the schedule, but I just want to be sure we're clear. Any ballot language that is expected to be seen on the April 6th ballot is due in the town clerk's office by March 2nd, mm -hmm. which means it's already been voted by board of selectmen. Right. So select board in both towns, obviously. Right. Okay. Just wanted to make sure that that March 2nd date, and that's not. Well, thank flexible. you for pointing that out. I knew not it was flexible. early after February, the end of February. There. Yeah, I think so. we have a meeting on the. Is it the 20th is the last meeting before that? Uh, February, uh, something like that. Eight know. weeks, Peter. Let's go. What's that? Eight weeks. Let's Easy. go. Pew, pew. We, can we talk after this meeting, you and I? <laughs> <laughs> we need a big sponsor for the, uh, for, yeah. the, uh, for the press box. Yeah. So the, pre the press box is one thing we're not touching <laughs> under, under the current proposal. <laughs> Jamie or Caroline, any other questions for Peter? Or? No, I mean, I, I want to reiterate that, like, we want this to happen and we want to help. I don't, I worry when we have meetings like this that there's some sense that we're. Okay, even though we've beat you up a little bit. That we're roadblocks. Oh, like, your, your, your concerns are fair. They're perfectly fair. And so how do we, you know. We welcome you to come back every yeah, meeting. Yeah, and, and like the, the yeah, PR of it come is back, like. Yeah, give us an update know every meeting because we want to build support, right? So, yes, yeah, I agree. And the, the articles will be on the warrant. We need the language. We need the amounts. Yeah. And I, I just want to make sure we're very clear about, like, nobody's trying to keep anything off the warrant. We recognize that they can, should, and will be on there. We just need clarity and language and then get the support. And, uh, Peter, your question earlier about the kind of mechanism to get Wenham to move in lockstep is, is having myself or this board reach out. I would say this, I don't know who suggested it, but I think Eric Tracy would probably be the best conduit between the three entities. <laughs> Um, and if, if he needs anything, let him know I, I'll write a letter of support or whatever. But I think that's probably the best because oftentimes our message goes like this when we ask for different things. Fair enough. And also Eric has more support of the school community behind him. And then I would also, as I said earlier, kind of implore those sports parents, et cetera, to start uh, email, letter writing, phone calls, all that stuff to the, on both of those boards to get them because we have a short runway here. And, you know, I think we've got a lot of support in the community, but we need that administrative support from both of those groups to actually have it come to fruition. So I think that's the key. Joe, did you have any comments? No, I just, um, Peter, picking up on, on the idea you had as I was sitting here listening to everything, if this is actually going to come forward as a school project and the school is going to basically be charging us an assessment based on our share of it, I, I just want to double check it with town council, but it's very likely that it's possible for us to vote that $500,000 contingent upon, <coughs> excuse me, uh, adoption of the program by, by one of them as well. But I think that's, that's probably a good, good possibility because the, 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 the reason for the language the way it was was to make sure that Hamilton wasn't putting in and not being matched by one of them. If this, we could potentially use this as just a way to pay our share, then that's a, a, a reasonable and Request. personally, I think it would be better if we could get one to match their share because it just means more you know, money it's, it's that way and less money on the tax rate. I right, agree. exactly. But Great. I, I'll have to check with town, double check with town council. Oh, and thank you for working on this. Yeah, I, I, your I, effort is appreciated. We will, support. we will. Peter, support I can you. remember 12 years ago at the rec center, 
with you and my wife and everybody else <laughs> trying to get this thing started. So I appreciate you sticking around. Somehow we're going to get it done. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> All right. Uh, we have, oh, lost my agenda here. I think up next we have a point. Uh, a new member of the Hamilton Environmental Impact Committee and determine term lengths for all current members, discussion and vote. Hello. Hi. Yeah, come on up, introduce yourself and we can. Hi, I'm Jeannie Moran, 21 Garfield Avenue, and I have applied for the Hamilton um, Environmental Impact Committee and um, I very much like to join the group but Jack Simons over here and uh, would appreciate your uh, approving my application. Thank you. Thanks. Any comments or questions? For I think, well, I guess relative to the next point, would you like a two year or well, one year? I, I was, I, I, <laughs> can I uh, offer a suggestion on that? Um, yes. Um, so the, the original uh, bylaws approved, approved by the select board called for uh, the, the first term, uh, the first initial appointment, there would be uh, three people appointed to a three year term and two people appointed to a two year term. Wait, two year, and two year and one year. Two year and one year, sorry. Yep, yep, yep. So what we, what I, I would recommend is that the first three people that came in get the two year the terms. Two. And yeah, you yeah, actually so vote to make them two and a half so that they'll all sunset in, Ju in June. Okay. Well, to make them all at sunset yeah, yeah, in the June right. of 24 and 25. Um, so the first, so the one and a, the one year terms will actually be one and a half year terms. Um, and then if you were to adopt it that way, then the first three people that came in would have the two and a half years expiring in June of 25. And Jeannie and whoever gets appointed next would have one and a half years expiring in June of 24. Okay. One and a half is fine for me. Perfect. All right. So let's let's start with um, a motion to approve Jeannie to the HEIC. So moved. All right. Second by anybody? Second. Second by Bill. Any other questions or comments? All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you so much. Thank you. We appreciate it. We're looking forward to this group getting going and giving us some direction and hints. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. All right, and then I would accept a motion to uh, have the appointments for the first three members that we've already um, appointed uh, be a two-year term, two years, basically two and but a two-and-a-half-year term currently so that they would expire in June 25. So moved. Okay. Second. Second by Caroline. Any further discussion? No. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Ayes have it. And then I would further take a motion uh, that uh, we, with our, we have one more opening now? Yep. Yeah. One more with opening. the current opening we just filled and the upcoming um, to do a one and a half year term expiring in June of 24 and thereafter a one year term. So moved. moved. Okay. Uh, second. Second. All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 All right. Ayes have it. Thank you, everybody. Uh, da, 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 da. HDC, Hamilton Development Corporation Infrastructure Grant Application Discussion with HDC Chair Rick Mitchell. Been a long time since I've seen you, Rick. How have you been? <laughs> yeah, all right. Rick and I just had a three-hour meeting. Of yeah, yeah, ago. yeah. We just uh, go from one meeting to another. Right. <laughs> Good to see you guys. Why? This floor is vibrating here. Does anybody it's, the, it's the heat. It's the part of the character of the building. Right. Yeah. Okay. I, don't worry. It's not going to collapse. <laughs> yes, it's, it's not going to collapse before well, you. We've had the structural study. It's not going to fall down just yet. So. Well, if I start vibrating when I'm talking, then you'll know why. <laughs> okay. Um, there should be a memo in your, um, in your information packet that uh, summarizes um, what, uh, what we're doing. I don't know if you guys have had a chance to... <clears throat> Hold on one second, Rick. I can't remember if it was in the packet or if Lori yeah. sent it to us. It's in there. It's I know the I packet. sent it to Lori because Lori was chasing me around going, I have to get it, I have to get it, and I sent it to her before. All right, then it's there. I just yeah, it's a one, page 14. Okay, I missed it. Thank you. <clears throat> Rick, sorry. I, I won't go through the whole thing um, because the uh, memo summarizes it, but <clears throat> basically MassWorks is a infrastructure fund um, for cities and towns uh, to make improvements to uh, enhance economic development. Um, they like to tie it to housing, um, but it's really designed to improve um, projects that uh, will enhance economic development in a downtown or other areas. 
and it includes uh, sewers, utility extensions, streets and road curbs, parking, water treatment uh, systems, public parks, pedestrian, bicycle ways. So um, myself and Scott Mattern have met with uh, Joe and Tim Olson to talk about um, HDC spearheading uh, an application process for MassWorks infrastructure funding in the downtown commercial district where the HDC has um, its authority, which is really Linden, um, um, Bay, Asbury, and starts with a Winthrop. W, I should know Winthrop. this. Winthrop. Winthrop. Thank you. Winthrop. So that's the general area that, that we have the uh, legislative authority to work within. Um, and we're thinking of Railroad Avenue as, a, as sort of the first attempt at this, um, although with discussions with Joe and Tim and other people, um, they've said, well, really, shouldn't we be doing a much larger project that goes down Bay Road to the, um, <coughs> the pool parking lot and would include the Winthrop on both sides of Bay Road? And I, and I would say wholeheartedly, absolutely, we should be treating them as a, a whole piece. Um, so, um, <clears throat> but that's not, we can't go beyond our, our sort of meets and bounds, and, and we can uh, assist the town in putting that application together and getting some of the documentation. Um, and the town may elect to pursue that. Um, but we're going to focus on Railroad Avenue because that's an area where we sort of have some general authority, although it is town property. So if we were successful in getting a pre-design grant um, and got the engineering and bid document, you know, preparation for bid documents, it would be the town um, that <coughs> would ultimately have to fund these but we could go back to MassWorks and ask for implementation funding. So um, that's sort of a quick overview of where we're going. As the memo says, you can use it <coughs> uh, for pre-development, pre-construction, direct construction, and construction administration. Um, those that are going to be most competitive are those ones that are in advanced design or permitting. In other words, they're shovel-ready. They really have a preference for shovel-ready projects. Um, leverage uh, private development or align with other <coughs> program spending targets, which is infrastructure for them. Um, they're also um, favorable to those communities that are kicking in funds um, in the application, so the HDC within its means um, is certainly willing to kick in um, funds towards an application for pre-design work to make just try and make our, more, us more competitive. Uh, the applications open June, uh, January 20th, and they go through a multi-step process. Um, they actually are, um, I haven't been through it before, but you put in an application and then they, they will get back to us and tell us where its strengths are, where its weaknesses are, whether they think it's competitive, what we might need to do to make it more competitive, and then we can decide if we're going to submit a final application or not. Um, so as I mentioned in the, at the bottom here, <coughs> we're looking really at Railroad Avenue and the sidewalk improvements, roadway improvements there. Um, we'd love to go across um, Bay Road, but that's a state highway, which is going to involve a much more uh, lengthy, detailed discussion with Mass DOT. So we're starting on a very long journey here with a small piece, and this is going to take multiple years to accomplish. Um, just wanted to give you an overview of what we were thinking. We've talked to Joe and Tim about this. We got the go-ahead to, sure, go ahead, you know, um, prepare the documents, and um, we're willing to do that and do the research and talk to people at MassWorks and find out exactly what we need to do and see if we can get this application going. Um, once we get a pre-application in or written, we'll talk to Joe again and Tim to make sure they're okay with that. Uh, we certainly can come back to the Board of Selectmen, a uh, select board, excuse me, um, and, and preview what we're hoping to submit funding for. 
Um, and that's pretty much it on the MassWorks piece. Um, so MassWorks <coughs> is every year they have funding? Yes, yes. It's have we ever gotten, received money from them before, or would this be a? No, we've never no. applied. No, you've never, you've never applied, you've never received funding. Um, we've yeah. done community connector grants. The MassWorks, MassWorks grew out of a bunch of diff, uh, disparate grant programs back during Prior, prior to the Deval Patrick administration, there were you know a what bunch the, of what the total MassWorks grant will be in 2022 or 2023? I haven't seen it announced yet. Th um, they with the change in administration, there's <coughs> really no way of knowing what it's, the They've asked for um, $400 million. Okay. Right. So it's a pretty big pot. Right, substantial. Um, and, you know, I was just... We still don't know what the administration's focus is going right. to be on, on, on infrastructure improvements, so... Right. No, but the in the uh, uh, FY20... What are we, 24 budget, 23 budget? FY24 budget, there's, 24. No, there's no House 1 budget yet. Right. The, the government has taken office, so. The uh, Baker administration put in a request for 400 million. Right. There's n they just didn't get to it. Right. Um, right. <clears throat> so there, I don't think there's a problem with it. But um, you know what's going on if you've been in um, Beverly, Tozier Road, Beverly High School, all that stuff that's going on there? That was a one mil one and point works. seven million dollar mass works mm -hmm. grant to wow. do the infrastructure improvements there. So that's an example of the kinds of things that. Um, good, yeah, that's a good example. And what, what do you have any idea what your funding will need to be for the first step? Is it hundred thousand? Is it? We <coughs> well, I, I can only I can only guess. We're looking at the pre. We're looking at the engineering document phase. Um, when we did a. Um, we had a landscape architect looked at Railroad Ave, and I think you, I know many of you people have seen what it looked mm -hmm. like because we were burying the poles or not burying the poles and really sprucing it up. And that was probably four years ago, and it was a capital budget of a, um, a million dollars to do the non-pole uh, improvements, sidewalks, roadways. I have no idea what the engineering would be for that. I'm guessing it should be pretty small, like okay. maybe 50,000, 75,000. Um, I really don't know. That's the next step, and we're going to have to work with Joe and Tim on that. We have to provide an engineering estimate, yep. you know, from a real engineer that says, okay, here's the scope, so you, and here's. Do you put up an RFP, or you just pay a engineer to do a preliminary? Well, we may, yeah. we may pay an engineer yeah. and we'll talk to Joe about who pays that engineer. We've got a couple of things. So HDC uh, as a quasi public agency has different procurement, procurement rules. I guess we, can we HDC. can also do we can also because it's a it because it's a professional um, Consult services yeah. consultant services we don't have to go out to bid although sometimes it is worth it for us to right. solicit a, for a couple of different bids. Uh, we'll we'll put that in the hands of Tim. He's these are, you know, practice procurement, guy, pr yeah. practice well, procurement yeah. professional. So, I mean, I'm, I'm in favor of the project. I'm just trying to figure out the best way to be successful with the grant. So it's like, do we want to just, why don't? Did you look at just paying for the design services so you're actually more shovel ready? Wouldn't it make it more beneficial to get money, or can you go back to them in a year? It doesn't take away from your ability to win two years in a row. Well, I, I, um, that's a that's a very that's a good question. I haven't gotten that far. So. <laughs> I guess um, it, it, is it, un is it I will, unusual I, to win I will two say, years, I, well, no. money two years in a row? Communities that typically get multiple mass works infrastructure grants are community are gateway cities. So Lowell, Lawrence, yeah. you know, Haverhill have all gotten multiple years. M most other communities, you know, get one if they apply every ten years or so. Um, but that's for construction. That's for the big right. money grants. Right. Rick's right now talking about going for a smaller grant. Um, there. Uh, Something to bear in mind is that this grant is tied to the MBTA zoning. When I was at, and I was next gonna, year, right, and I was going to bring that up. That's the fly in the ointment. Um, and I, right, if we're out of compliance, we're not on the table at all. Say again. As if we're out of compliance with that zoning, where we don't right. even have. And a we have tw skin until twenty twenty four to come into compliance. So we're kind of like trying to slide in uh, under that. Uh, deadline um, and that may if we're successful may provide an impetus maybe a taste for the town to go oh gee you know there's real money to be had if we actually move on that MBTA zoning mm -hmm. um, anyway it's it's part of our strategic plan we've done the housing part we want to move on to infrastructure this is a pot of money that's available 
um, and we thought it, it would be crazy not to go after it. So, so from us, I see. I'm looking at your next steps here: identify projects, gain approval from town leaders, substantiate amount request with engineering cost estimates or similar documentation. So, I'm going to assume and and speak from the board, even though I shouldn't, that <laughs> we like grant money. Um, all we have to do is apply for it, so I don't think we want to refuse money from the state to help us improve our infrastructure, et cetera. Um, but would you, I'm sure in the part of the grant process is some type of a endorsement letter from some local person or the town manager or something like that, oh, yeah. which we'll oh. provide at the time. But as far as identifying projects, I agree with your kind of possible projects here. The first one is the one that I would pick. But do you need, as HDC and filling out this application, for us to help you pick one of these priorities, or? Um, I, well, that's up to the, I mean, if you wanted to go big and say, hey, I want to do, you know, Bay Road from a Linden to, um, you know, a Patton Park, that would be a town thing, and Joe shaking his head going, no, we don't State's do not going to give us grant money to do Bay Road. It's the state road. It, they may agree to invite us into a process to figure out how the state would do Bay Road, but they're not going to give us grant money for us to touch Bay Road. Yeah, our, I'm, our I'm best focus <coughs> through HDC will be on Railroad Ave and, and Willow. Right. Yeah, I guess I'm, I'm thinking Railroad Ave and Willow or connecting across Asbury to Patton Park and down to well, the Well, yeah, I think that's a good point is it could be uh, Railroad, Winthrop, and Asbury since there's, right. you know, so you right, can, that, you get the in the overlay right. basic right 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 so I, I think that makes the most sense and that that's a good idea and so then we might as well go for everything we can get yeah that's my thought because as, as uh, Joe was saying earlier that you know for our size town and what we have it's probably a one grant to do something and then 10 years or never so we should ask for Disneyland basically right so sounds good to me we can get does and everyone kind of agree with <coughs> yeah. that? Yeah. Ask for the pre-design funding or ask for the construction funding? Well, you know, that, that gets back to your question is, sh should we just jump ahead and say, s forget the pre-construction design funding, and I'm, I'm not committing HDC to this, just, but to say, pay hey, whatever number that is. Use free cash to for, fund the, for the detail for the detailed engineering. Yeah, I, I guess my thought on that, you, you may not like it, but I would like HDC to pay for some of that preliminary stuff, and then well, that's what I'm, get behind it, right? That, that's what I'm saying. Because you have some cash in your kitty, so you know that would help us out because that's not taking taxpayer dollars. I mean, it is, but it's a different mechanism, right? But <clears throat> you're paying meal tax money and some of the stuff you got from the sale of Willow, and et cetera. Yeah, yeah. So if, if you did some of that design work and then we got it to basically shovel ready and then we went ahead and, and put that in, I think we'd get more bang for our buck and get a shot at it. That's my thought. With more money, too, yeah. right? I like it. Because okay. otherwise they're going to be like, oh, yeah, here's your 50 grand for your feasibility study. <laughs> and they'll see it in 10 years. They'll see it in 10 years. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. I, I think that's I don't it. know if there's some history to know whether that's you can get two years or three years in a row of funding. But anyways, yeah, no, I'm in favor of it, how we can help. And support and if we need to match some funds to make it happen like you can come back to us and tell us what it is but we would want the investment to be from your funds first so oh yeah absolutely I mean that's why we're, we're having this conversation it's but part of our strategic plan is like we we have a pot of money for infrastructure improvements and we want to get going on that and just an up quick update on the a little park that's on the corner of railroad and bay um, the Christmas tree yeah, Christmas tree, tree um, that's owned by the condominium trust, um, three members, TD Bank, the uh, uh, vet building, and the medical building that Dave Cutter bought. Um, the medical building, and he's a 51% shareholder in the condominium trust. We're talking to Dave about what we can do to turn that into a pocket park. He's talked to the other board members, and they're supportive of that. And he said, "Come back to us with a plan." So basically, we're going to have to go to part of it, right? We're going to have to go to a, a landscape architect and come up with some kind of plan for a pocket park there, um, which we're pretty excited about. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean that he'll do it, but he'd like to see a plan. Um, and I think he's generally supportive of, of the idea of mm -hmm. doing something nice down there. So we're going to be pursuing that. And also, um, 
<coughs> wayfinding, uh, the signage down there, and that's really part of the parking study that we co-funded mm -hmm. two years ago that I know Patrick Reffitt's working on, and hopefully there'll be impl maybe implementation in the spring is I want to work with Tim on that in terms of signage, you know, and that would be part of the park at park is there's just no signage about what's downtown and, you know, um, so we're going to be working on that as well. So that's, that's uh, the HDC world and um, hopefully we'll be back to you maybe in two or three months with an update on where we're going on with the application. One last thing, and I know it's a bit out of our control, is, and Rick, you and I have had this conversation, and I think I've had it with Joe a little bit, and we've talked downtown improvements and visioning and aesthetics and all kinds of stuff, and refresh my memory on the post office. Is there any way to negotiate anything with that building or that site at all, or is that strictly it is what it is? Um. Well, the local postmaster has actually been very cooperative. We, we tried the, first off, um, we went to the postmaster, and the post office being the post office, he had to go to his supervisor, and the supervisor said, you know, because we wanted to buy the vinyl covers to those ugly yellow yeah, yeah. things, and he said no. <clears throat> but he since retired, and our local postmaster um, has been favorably disposed, said, well, let's just try it. Do we Go. have two postmasters because we have two post offices well, in town? The, the no, one I think, the, I think that the, the person that manages this one is not a full postmaster. I think that they gotcha. work somehow in tandem. Um, and I have no idea why we have two post offices. Because <laughs> it's Hamilton and South Hamilton. See that guy there? <laughs> Teddy Roosevelt? Yeah. The postmaster he, um, general built a house at the end of Rock Maple. It's gone now. Um, that was Where the Pappas's are, kind of? Yes. Yeah. That's gone now. The house, um, when he died, the mansion there was, the brothers hated each other. They cut it in half, and they moved it up to the top of Meyer Lane. So there's two houses, houses. up there. Um, and so anyway, um, so We've actually, um, and we're working with Robin Davis, as you may know, who is very active in the downtown. She actually went out and got pricing for, for those. Uh, she went for the deluxe premium ones, and we said, no, that's a little too expensive. So we're trying to do, we're, so the answer is, we want to get those yellow things covered and then move on to the flower boxes mm -hmm. and maybe some benches. Um, and um, I've talked to our attorney, for the HDC, and she said, that's fine. As long as you retain ownership and the, and the uh, post office, the local guy has no problem with that, then, you know, go for it. So we're kind of like, like sneak under the radar. To make Baby steps, right. So lots, right. Of, lots of things going on. Thank you. Thank you, Rick. Much appreciated. Rick. All right, up next we have can we, uh, we've got Tim Let's on. Go, I was just going to say, can we it, take him out of yeah, if the board doesn't mind, we'll do the water abatement next so Tim doesn't have to sit here all night. Uh, water abatement for Bridge Street property, discussion and vote it is in your packets. Is the homeowner here? I do not believe so, but Tim is. Tim, do you want to give us the, the uh, overview here? Can we just here? make a motion? Yeah, uh, Tim Olson. DPW director, I, it's it's very actually very similar to the previous abatement. Uh, there was a there's a meter pit with a lengthy uh, service line. Um, several there was a there was a leak that was noticed uh, in the meter pit when we went to go repair. Uh, it was noticed that there was an actual electrical line in the meter pit that we could not make those repairs until that line was moved. Uh, it took National Grid a lengthy time to get out to make those repairs. Uh, once that line was removed, uh, we made the repairs to the meter. Thinking that that was the only leak on that line, um, it was evident that it wasn't the next uh, billing cycle. And um, Burr Clark, the, the property owner, um, talked to us, he called us, we told him the best uh, situation for him would be to hire a leak detector uh, company to come in. Um, he did that, he paid for it out of pocket 
found the leak on the line and made and paid for a contractor to come in and make the repairs timely. So um, there was no evidence. Again, uh, it's very it's small leak, uh, but over a period of time, it's a uh, it's a lot of water that's used, but nothing was evident inside. Uh, no pressure issues, no discoloration. Um, it was more that we saw the leak when we read the meter. Uh, that is a pit. Uh, so we actually physically opened the lid of the pit and read the meter and we could see the leak going on. Um, so we were under the impression that there was one leak uh, as well as the owner of the property. Uh, like I said, they made arrangements to make that repair, uh, but there was actually another leak on the line. Uh, once that was determined, he did make those repairs timely. And uh, since then those repairs are made and the uh, usage has gone back to uh, previous uh, normal use. All right. Bill, you were going to say something? I was going to make a motion to approve the uh, water abatement at 440, 4, 440 Bridge Street in the amount of $500 for the application. Second? Second. There, okay. Could I just uh, comment on this, though? This is a kind of a unique so situation because it did discussion. span two different quarters. Yeah, I, the so there was actually, in the abatement package that I sent in, there was actually two two quarters that, that was affected by the, this leak um, or a series of leaks on the same water line. Um, so I think what the resident was looking for uh, was a, the, the $500, because uh, both of them are over that uh, maximum. Uh, he was looking for a $500, um, you know, a minimum of a $500 um, uh, abatement for both bills. So did everybody get that? So this this was over two billing cycles. Right. So the person who's asking for the abatement is asking for 500 twice. from, right, twice. But and under either policy, you're still only allowed to apply at once. Once. Right. Yeah, we have in the past allowed both if it was under the like a same initial uh, if it's same, same situation. Issue, we've um, let it carry over two billing cycles. Over billing, so yeah, two billing cycles. I, I wouldn't say that this is one leak. Then, the, as much as it seems like it was two different leaks, I would say it, it probably happened about the same time. There must have been some type of pressure issue, uh, old line, um, old infrastructure um, that caused. Uh, multiple leaks like I said I think they felt they felt like they fixed the, the leak at the meter um, but it wasn't evident after the uh, you know the next billing cycle that they had not fully fixed you know the problem so we have a motion we have a second in further discussion it sounds like further discussion so let me resend my motion yeah if Plug you a motion to approve a thousand dollar water abatement for 440 440 bridge street for the application for both billing cycles one thousand dollar total okay i'll second it if you don't want go to. for it second all right second by jamie uh, obviously further discussion i'm guessing further discussion away <laughs> Uh, but this is the net results the same and it's cleaner if, if, if it's one thousand dollars for one billing cycle it's truer to the policy yes right and, right and I was gonna suggest and, that and it gets you it gets you the right. same result right that you were and because for. our past practice has really been right. one abatement yes, one so abatement for one thousand if we right if we make it one abatement for the thousand dollars it's still yeah the the, the abator is still getting the same but our policy but it's within our policy if anything over 500 bucks needs to be approved by the site board and we're in theory approving it but i wish the homeowner was here but i'm still zoda wrote a lengthy letter though yes Very yeah. lengthy. all right no further discussion from me <laughs> any further discussion from this end of the table So a message, you have the public listening to you, Tim. We've had two of these now in the last <laughs> month. What should homeowners do that have 300 feet, foot long water lines that seem to be in, in the age of their, whatever age it is there, these are, what, what do you recommend that these homeowners do? How, how do you avoid this? So yeah, can, you well, put a tricky, uh, can you put a sensor you know, on your meter because that, that, that shows overuse, overspin? 
I mean, it, it, like I said, it's tricky because if their meter uh, is in the meter pits uh, near the roadway, they're not actually um, that easy to access. It's not like they can just pop the lid and see if there's a if there's a leak or the meter's spinning. Um, some of these lengthy lines are um, aged and even the smallest leak over time can add up but they won't show any significant impact in the home uh, regarding pressure issues or discoloration so there could be a lot of time that goes by at least three months obviously between billing uh cycles oh, that, that but can um, they buy something that they know, put in their meter that, <clears throat> that allows them to read it themselves is there is there a part that they can put down there and so so the not not on these meters uh, a lot of the pit meters are are older um there are newer meters that can read um you know we can that could be installed that they could read uh via an, an app an app on their phone or a computer um they, they are pricey they are um something that we don't carry um but if it's something that they uh, want to spend uh, if if you know we have to um replace the meter they can they can maybe spend the difference we've had two get something like we've that put in as long as it works with our infrastructure and our so software so. we've had two homeowners spend over seven thousand dollars for water so i gotta imagine these meters cost less than seven i gotta imagine the risk reward is good so what i'm saying i wouldn't talk people out of looking at the expensive a more expensive meter if it's going to save them but well, the meters are what a, a couple grand or so isn't that right Am I right on that? Uh, it depends on what the meter is. Yeah, right. I mean, as long as I mean, I could do some uh, some research and see what type of meters would work that way. Uh, I'd like with to have our a solution. Current, uh, software. I'd, like to, I'd like to have a solution that we can put out to our residents because this we've seen two, right? So we shouldn't just let this go and think it's not going to happen again. We have lots of long right. Well, I, I, yeah, we have yeah. lots of technology. We should be able to offer technology that. Right. So I was just side chatting the Joe here. We have our annual water rate hearings in January. Yeah. And I would suggest that maybe we, as much as I don't want to revisit it, we look at our abatement policy again and just make sure we're got everything the way we want because I don't want to keep having the abatement discussion every time. I want it to be pretty clear for everybody, including the board and people that are abating, right. that it's you know it's a one-time abatement, it's a $500 cap, or whatever the circumstances are. You know, I guess I have an issue abating after the meter between the house that's the homeowner typically so you know and like you said the meter thing we could offer a here's what a meter cost would be if you think your lines are right. old to monitor it yourself but or give them a credit towards a give a final credit towards a new meter but okay. yeah it's something it, we just can't just ignore it because it seems like it's going to happen more and more with the, our old water line so right but the homeowners have no way of knowing when it's well, a meter and we've had like in and Tim, you can attest to this in neighborhoods like mine where we've repaved the road. At the time the repaving was done, I had the option to update my water line from the road to the house and the meter and everything like that. And a lot of people took advantage of that. I didn't because I know what I'm doing. Yeah. But right, some right. People but, do. And, so. but also, I mean, we're only really talking about the, the, the residents that have meter pits. <clears throat> Otherwise, a lot of the meters are, are within the home. Right. Um, so they could, if they're accessible, they could go down into their basement or to their crawl space or whatever they want to do and actually look at the meter reading themselves. and make sure that it's not spinning. Um, this one, these that are in the pits, they, it, like I said, it's very, they're not the easiest place to get into. Um, a normal um, resident would have a trouble getting into a, a meter pit. It takes our guys sometimes um a couple guys to get in there just because of um corrosion or or they're buried underneath the ground or frozen dirt or or sometimes they're full of water uh and frozen <laughs> to shut so um some of the some of the other um residents that have offered um to replace their water line and their water service that had meter pits if they've done uh you know if they've produced and paid for a new service, I have then placed the water meter inside the house right. and not within the pit. So, but that gives us, a, a, you know, some comfort and I guess some um, realization that the, the service is new, um, you know, and obviously how, it could, how many water there could pits? be a leak, but it's, it's newer, there's okay. comfort in that. How many that, water meters that, do we have in, how many water meter pits do we have in town, if you had to guess, is it 10 or is it a thousand? 
Uh, no, I would say it's probably um, maybe 30. So two out of the 30 have been a problem? They're old. <laughs> Their lines are old. Uh, the service know, lines, we, you know, that one at like, Bridge Street is probably 300 yards long. I know, so I'm saying, like, can we send, an, can we send a letter to the 28 other residents with a solution of what they should do? I mean, it's, it's, a, it's cost this town thousands of dollars in the last month. And the homeowners yeah, I mean, thousands it's of dollars. Not, yeah, well, to Bill's point, I wonder if we can be proactive with those, say, 30 folks and just say, we'll do a, even when you have a little DPW break, have them go by and just check the meter. Right. Just see, you know, if it's corroded, if it's, and give them just a, hey, this looks great, or hey, you're going to need to get it, time to get it, time to move fast, right? Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, well, every time we read, we have to access them, right, so we have a pretty it. good idea of what the condition are, um, you know, and, and we do look to see if they're spinning, if they're, you know, so it's not going to be a period of, like I said, it's going to be a, a few months in between reads. Um, right, and and there's no way you can tell that the the, the you can't determine the condition saying, of the line, the but you can at least two, see that. Two of these, two or 30 have gone. <clears throat> yeah, it's at your, your risk now for, it's just, I'm trying to be proactive. For yeah, 28 yeah. letters, it well, seems the, like, like the leaks were in the yeah. line between the leaks water and the meter. Line, not the, the, the leaks were in the line, not the, 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 the key is being able meters to monitor running. the meter. If the meter's running, you should right. be able to have a meter where you can tell the meter's running. And so with the, all the technology we have right now, if you can't put a meter in your system that allows you to have an app on your phone as your meter's running, I'm sure there's a solution. They could, it might be expensive, but it's still a lot cheaper than a seven thousand dollar water bill. So that's my point. That's fair. True. Yeah, as long as long as we can find one that works with our system, yeah. you know, that's that's the that's the trick. And I don't mind researching that and offering the, you know, the group um, the uh, option. I mean, I don't think we can require it, but. No, no, I know. No, but, but if yeah. we offer the option and they don't take advantage of it, then that, that might, happens. That, that might that feel might, better. That might predispose no. this select board yeah. against giving them a water rebate. Exactly. They were offered off on an alternative to avoid with it. With the five hundred dollars highlighted. <laughs> right. Right. All right. Thank you, Tim. Yep. Thanks, Tim. So uh, still got a vote. We have a motion. Yeah. We have a second. Any further further discussion? <laughs> Seeing none. I mean, the reason we're giving them a thousand instead of the five hundred is because we feel like it. Not, I mean, in theory, it's because they fixed it, but they didn't fix it. it. Wasn't like they didn't fix it for two months. They fixed it, and they were still a leak. Once again, and once again, and we're giving it because we didn't limit it to five hundred. We just said if it goes over five hundred, we need to approve it. That's what it, we, keep, we keep forgetting about. The discussion was gives us flexibility without having people just come to us for any any crazy number they want. So, but I'm approving it because it was it was um, it was they fixed it. You know, it was like they thought fix. they fixed it. They thought they fixed it. No fault of theirs. They did the right thing. Yeah. Great. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All right. Thank you, Tim. Sure. All right, back to uh, approvals of annual license renewals, discussion, and vote. Uh, we have several things up here. Yeah, do you want, if you want, I can help. Um, you have uh, alcohol licenses, you have common victory licenses, you have two entertainment licenses, and you have one class two motor vehicle sales license. Um, I can, if you'd like, I can read the yeah, why don't we kind of do them by category? By category, and then it all. Um, why don't I just say, okay, up first we have alcohol licenses renewals, and they are Myopia Hunt Club, Weathervane Tavern, American Legion, AP Gardner Post, 15 Walnut, The Post Restaurant, Community Package Store, Crosby's Marketplace, Hamilton Convenience, Honeycomb, AM Convenience, and Harrigan's. All right, and then I would entertain a motion to approve those renewals. So moved. Second. And I'd just like to add that all the proper paperwork has been submitted by all of these entities, including they are all up to date. the et cetera all that we have. All their inspections, all their fees, everything is ready to go. They wouldn't be here tonight if they weren't. Correct. All right. Uh, motion second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Up next we have common Victrola license renewals, and they are? American Legion AP Gardner Post, The Post Restaurant, Five Sons Pizza, Dunkin' Donuts, Crosby's Marketplace, Hamilton Convenience, Hamilton House of Pizza, Myopia Hunt Club, Weathervane Tavern, The Community House, 15 Walnut Tavern, Cumberland Farms, and Honeycomb. 
Anybody want to make a motion to approve those common Victor Euler license renewals? So moved. Thank you. Second? Second. Second by Caroline. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Is there a reason that one wouldn't be on the second that was on the first? Um, yes, because... Different... Um, versus alcohol. Yeah. yeah. Was the weather rain on the second one? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, they were both. Yeah, both, yeah. Uh, it's not in the same order because they're license numbers. Got so it. They're listed by license numbers. So. Uh, up next, we have entertainment licenses, which are... American Legion AP Gardner Post and 15 Walnut. And a motion to approve said so licenses. Uh, a second. Second. All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 And last but not least, Class 2 license renewals. A&M Motors. All right. Um, motion to approve A&M Motors Class 2 license renewal. So moved. Second. Second. So there's more than – so – what is requ what requires a class two? Aren't there more than one motor repair shop in town? I don't think this is for repair. That's for that's something else. This is a that's for selling autos. Sell it's for selling autos. So okay. This is for selling. It's for selling. Yes. Y yeah. Used car sales. Yep. I don't okay. think that they're currently doing any of that, but they they're trying to keep their license in good. Gotcha. Stuff. Okay. We've had a couple applications in the past, as you might remember from being on the board a little bit longer, that were a little bit iffy, and we've refused them. Yeah, I remember because I remember. I've looked this up before. Yeah. All right. Um, did we have a motion to motion? Second, I second it. Second by Caroline, second by Bill. All those in favor say aye. 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 Ayes have it. Don't forget, we got to sign all so these. So, Joe, documents. there's yeah. nobody sign. missing, right? No. Everybody everybody that had a license oh. that needed to be renewed had got their paperwork in on time. Um, Lori, did a, Lori had a, a lot of success this year getting in touch with people. People got back quickly. Uh, we were in good shape this year. Yeah. All right, goal setting and evaluation for the town manager discussion and vote. Um, Tom was spearheading that. It's in your packets. Well, what's uh, in? I think yeah. at right. the end, right? No. Yeah. It's the last couple of pages. Last couple of pages, okay. right? All right. Do we want to discuss this, or do we want to wait for Tom to discuss? So, what was the next step between? The I document that I provided that's on page 27, 28, and the document that Tom provided in 29 and 30, because I thought we went ahead and prioritized them relative in that meeting last. 29 and 30 is not what Tom Yeah, no, provided. it isn't. That's what I was going to say. I didn't, think, I didn't see anything from Tom myself. So He said that it's uh, Excel spreadsheet. I thought he was told me he was going to send one to you. I don't he sent it to me. He I said he was going to send it to you. Maybe it didn't get farther than that. All right. All right, so I'd like to table this until perfect, Tom gets back. Perfect. But he did. There was a spreadsheet. I'll make you sure you have it, Joe. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, he spent some time on it. It looked pretty good. All right, so we'll discuss that next time with, with Tom when he's here and all of us. Uh, and up last, we have new business. The only thing we had was a request from Helen. I forget her last name for a sign for the North Shore Nordic Trail Association. They were hoping to put a sign up tomorrow until March 15th or something like that. So what does that mean? Yeah, what value does that serve? So Where's that the sign going to go? Tennis courts. Tennis, Tennis courts. courts. You, but we can't vote on that. Well, right. Or we can. You said you want to put it up tomorrow. They want to put it up tomorrow. But she emailed me yesterday. There's no posting requirements. So oh, not, okay. You can, you can take that up. It's, a, it's up can, to you. Okay. I make it's, a motion. Should we make a motion? And well, so let's make a motion, then we, we can discuss, discuss it. it. Make a motion, let the trail. North Shore Nordic North Shore. Association. Nordic, right? North Shore, North Shore Nordic. Nordic Association. North Shore Nordic Association. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, place a sign on the patent tennis courts until the end of March 2023. I think it was mid-March. So let's say March 15th, I March 15th, it was. 20, Let me find March my email 20, so I'm not talking out of turn here. Bill's going to hate me because I just used up all the bandwidth opening my computer up here. It's March 15th, according to the email. Okay. Thank you, Caroline. Yes. So we've... we've I made a motion. I have a second. Second. All right. Further discussion. So we've we've had this in the past, and this is an organization that uh, 
let's see who started it. Is it um, it's been around about five years plus now. It's so really cross country skiing, and it's a Patton Homestead has some trails across the it. Snowmobile and they snowmobile. They groom it with the snowmobile trails, yeah. and stuff like that. Um, I don't remember how long we've let them have the banner up before. If it's been December, the March, or whatnot. And to Caroline's point, I don't know how many people see it and say, "Oh." It, the challenge I have is that this feels like advertising to me, whereas like the other ones are, and I have not been here for a long history, but like, you know, requests to celebrate athletes in the schools, mm -hmm. messages from public safety or public works, yeah. whereas they, they are a volunteer <coughs> organization, right. but it feels like they're asking for us to, to advertise their organization vis-a-vis -vis this banner on our fields, or on our tennis courts. And I just don't know what, what the, the precedent is for that, and so does that mean well, that yeah, and I don't disagree with you because I actually have a different. I don't know, I was going. I was actually going to make it before this was on the agenda, but but if you, I'll respond to yours. And I'll make my comment. Yeah. I agree with you. It happens to be a volunteer organization. Yeah. So no. I. Right. So do we have? Do we have to have some sort of? Because my issue is that, although I love what they did across the street. And I welcome community house did. They're now using that fence to put banners on the fence. Yes. And so every week is a different banner on the fence. Yes. And I'm not in favor of that, because who knows what's going to happen right. with that. And I think we should have a conversation with so, the community house about that. With so it's like we're voting on a banner, but they just go put whatever banner they want, whatever concert or event, which I promote it. They have, but they already have a board. So they got the board, and then they got the banners. So anyways, I think we need to think about right advertising in town and what that means and what the, the pros and cons of it. And, Visual impact. And especially now that Rick's talking about investing a bunch of money to make our town more appealing and attract business and whatnot. So. It's a whole discussion, but um, but that was my thought. But yeah, I agree with you. Like when, like what is this? What is a public service sign? Yeah. And what is an advertisement? Right. It would be very similar to your point in having ECTA come to us and ask us to put an ECTA banner about the trails in town for right. bridal pass and etc. Do we have a picture of what the sign looks like? No. It's also four by eight. Does that meet our criteria? That's a big one. So it's a big, pretty big. Eight feet is taller than James. That's like the size of the water. And I guess my, my kind of follow-ups were, I can't remember, and I should know because I've been here forever. Um, ever. 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 Uh, what is our time period, I think, our past practice on what's the window that we've had? It's in, And some of them have gone way past. Like the tennis one went way past. The elderly abuse one went way past. And I thought we had a window of time that they were up for was zoning and I swear one went away and then came back again and we never voted on it so I'm not even sure who's putting them off but the stop hell of abuse went away and they came back right uh, and it came back bigger yeah so it yeah. must be a problem so the and Are you looking assuming at the assuming this the is the updated current policy. the current policy uh, it's supposed to be for a minimum amount of time and generally generally for not more than a period of two weeks and it it like says sh there shall not be a non-town banner on the tennis courts okay <laughs> there shall not it's, it's a double negative can you make that into a sentence for me please um thou shalt not hang there <laughs> there shall not be a thou non shalt not not <laughs> uh, i got right, confused by double negative not be a non-town not all right non-town banners may not be hung on the tennis courts or above the roadways Non town. So, so is North Shore, do we do we fund North Shore Nordic Association with town money? No, they're a non profit. But they don't get their money from our from town from no. tax money. Oh, then that's the answer to the question. Because I think you said in a precedent. I think that's it then. Right. Yeah. Mm. If we look at our policy, that's our policy, and and from now on we should stick to our policy if we're going to enforce it tonight. Right. And then also two weeks. Right, that's the other part of it. It, it does. It, it does give you a little bit of an out. General. That one's a general. general. The other. The other one's a prohibition, but it's generally not more than a period of two weeks. What's currently up there? Too much. Yeah. Uh, why don't I take a Why don't we take a survey of that tomorrow? Well, once again, this is a survey. This is a problem. We all drove by it today, and no one looked, and no one knows what's up there because it just after a while you just stop seeing them because you see exactly. them all the time. Did the pickleball wind nets go up? I don't know. No. They weren't up the last no. time I played I will say on the typically, 
years ago when I was first on the board, really the only thing that went up there was the vote, get out the vote, and the water ban. That was all that was allowed up there. Mm -hmm. And for some reason, at some point, it started to be North Shore Nordic and wh whoever else applied was, was granted. Yeah, I, I, you, you got me on, on, on pickleball wind nets. Are those really going up? I didn't know that. I doubt they'll go up before the spring now, though. Yeah. Pickleball's going to be played in the winter, I'm not sure. I play in the winter. Good build. We <laughs> keep our balls in a cooler full of warm water. <laughs> Do some calisthenics. Shh, shh. So, the secret out. All right, so. I think we have to say no because of our policy. I think we have to say if no. Someone wants to come to us and propose a new policy. Let someone come to us and propose a new policy. But at this point, our policy is to say no. All right. Because the community house is, is it technically, are they beholden to our policy or do they it's have to? The community policy. house is beholden to our zoning. The zoning, which doesn't allow you to put. Which doesn't allow that. It has signage things. So we'll have, I'll have, um, I'll refer this building inspector to speak to the community house about their signage. And uh, they can seek permission, I believe. But do you want to do you they want to vote to negatively board. on the motion or do you want to rescind your motion? Do you want a negative vote on your motion or do you want to rescind it? <laughs> negative, negative. It's a double negative again. Okay. Well, you, you've you've said to do you say to approve it when you made your yeah, motion? You made the motion. To so you made the motion. Yeah, to approve just, it. It would just yeah. This is I'll just vote on the motion and just deny the motion. Yeah, deny the okay. Motion. Oh, my first look time. at us. Are you ready? <laughs> I think so. Right. All those in favor of the motion say aye. All those in favor in not in favor of the motion say nay. 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 How about that? I All, right. to the All those who abstain, nobody. Motion does not carry. Any other new business? Updating our banner and sign policy. Well, I mean, because the the, the the once again the you know, the baseball with a little league they they you know they would like to make, not they want to come in front of us at some point and they would like to make money by selling you know, banner space, on, in the baseball fields there. So, right. So, but that's, they haven't come to us yet. But that's. At Jamie's we're point, about. do we want to revisit our sign? We should banner talk policy. to people who is it. I think people who is it, it advances to them should come to us with a proposal. Right. That's usually how it goes, right? We, I wouldn't think about it unless someone comes and convinces us that's the right thing to do and what, what the benefits of it are. For us, the benefit is keep it how it is. Because Cheeseman is under Wenham's Wenham, jurisdiction, right. so we could find out what they did. But Yeah, it seems a, bl a little bit of a Pandora's box unless we have a very clear Seasonal vision for what whatever, we yeah. want yeah. these spaces to be. Can you, you imagine that whole tennis court fence being covered with banners? Yeah, so we could do it like we encourage the uh, Conscom to do. We could just update it for easy stuff. Yeah. Like if we're not going to require insurance certificates, Take right, it out right now we, we do. Which so by the way, we mocked a bit, except for the was it at the end of the summer there was one that was hanging by one yeah, thread, I and I was like, well, if it blew into the road, yeah, that's why you have an insurance policy. Well, I think what we. Joe had said, or at least what I remember is, our insurance covers it. Covers it. Yeah. So we could still require other people so that our so that we don't get claims for other people's right. stuff. But we, I, just, I mean, we just need to make a decision. I'm not saying we should get rid of that requirement. I just mean that we either need to have the requirement and enforce it, or right. Uh, also, I, too I many think banners, and you can't watch your children on the playground while you play tennis. <laughs> so we should be mindful of that as well. Mm -hmm. That's a good point, though. Yeah, we it don't is. obstruct the view. And even though it's self-serving, but I think, I think it's a good point. Yeah, so I think that we should invite, I think that, that at some point when things probably invite people that want to put banners there when we rewrite the policy so we only do it once. Yeah. And we can choose whether to include it or not, but at least we have all the information. And we, we could make it similar to our flag policy, that it's, you know, like it says in the policy kind of now, that it's only... A, Town sponsored right. government type of speech right. on it. Right. That one was easy to get through, okay. so I look forward to the policy. Again. I'd, actually, I'd actually endorse that idea. I think it right. so it's makes a very it a lot easier policy to be stuff that has to come from the select board members. Mm -hmm. And 
you know. Yeah, that's why I kind of said it. I mean, we did. It took us a hot second to get through that policy, but <laughs> but now that we have it, it's well. Since Tom's not here, let's let him know that he's responsible for the update of <laughs> that. Sounds low. Banner policy. Yeah. Jamie. Hi. <laughs> Uh, never mind. I'll just I'll save those comments for for, <laughs> for when, future, we, act, for when we actually deal with this right. policy. I think what you meant to say is I moved to adjourn. So I think we've, I think we've all adjourn. agreed that we should put <laughs> on new business a rewrite or a revisit of the banner policy. However, prior to doing that, we should get some involvement from community leaders, i.e., the little league baseball or whatever other sports to see if there's I'm some. trying to think who's kind of solicited us for signs in the past it's North Shore Nordic tennis. the League of Women Voters tennis so Little League that, so Little League, Little League they really want, has they, a, they want they to put signs come to me they want to put them along to, the fence yeah right. but but still same thing it's it's that right I guess I'm think I was thinking specifically tennis courts but we should be thinking a yeah. little more holistically yes, right so yeah. We should also just keep an eye on it because there have been some up there that I don't think came to us. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Then I should get them removed. We need official town scissors snippers. <laughs> we just go in the dead of night. We won't even bother Tim. We'll do it ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Jamie made a motion. Second. I second that motion. Okay. Uh, all those in favor of adjourning, say aye. 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 The eyes have it. Thank you, everyone. If you're still with us on Zoom, and thank you. Thank you, Receiver. Thanks, Duke.